<laughs> because you guys are on the street. <laughs> Take the gunshot, 3516 South King Drive. 3516 King Drive for the gunshot. What's that? See how it changes? You be it. You'll be on your ambulance and they'll say, forget that. Go take this. <laughs> That's all the time. <laughs> uh, so before we approach our scene, is our scene safe? What are you looking for? Oh, I mean, what police. are you looking for in terms of safety? We're looking to see if the police is dispatched on the scene. Okay, the police is standing over there with the green shirt on, so you have police on the scene, so the scene okay. is safe. The scene cool. is secure. Only one victim. Uh, how you doing today? So oh, so they shot me. Victim? Oh. Right, where you bleeding? That's so where you hit it. Oh, they shot me. Oh, where you at? Oh. You, got a, you got a gunshot wound to the abdomen. Um, oh. Is it a sense of bleeding, mouth bleeding? Oh. All right, all right. Oh. What happened, sir? You got shot one time? Oh, you hurt anywhere else? Oh, all right, I'm going to check the back, oh. see if it's an exit wound. All right, need, need something to stop bleeding. Oh, oh I can't down his back. You might have to lift his back of his shirt up. So that you can see. So if you got a hole here shot here, you might have to do something like that, right? Right, right, right. See if you see a hole. All right. Is it an exit wound? I'm going to say there's an exit wound right here. Cool. Well, so we need to put some guns. That's a bubble. Oh, I can't breathe. Oh. All right, so I'm just going to put this right here to stop the bleed. Can you hear that for me? Pressure right here. I can't feel my leg. Ah! Oh. He doesn't have a foot in his leg. Can you move your toes for me? What about your uh, left foot? Can you move those toes? Do you feel any of this? Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. So I'm gonna stop you guys for a second, and Severin, I'm gonna let you go ahead and jump in. We're gonna talk about priorities. You want me to jump in as a person or an evaluator? I want you to evaluate them. Oh, okay. Just, just give him a nugget right now. Just a little correction on their priorities. Um, he just said he can't breathe. Oxygen. Goes right back to your ABCs. Don't worry about it. You got it. You got it. Good. Okay. So. I mean, we don't have the actual tank. Can we just say like that's what I said? You got it. Just here. You don't have that. You got the tank. You got so the tank. Yeah, go ahead. Talk us through what you're doing. So we're going to set him up on a non rebreather. I'm going to pass it. There's a couple of other things you can do before you get to the, um, before you get there. So you doing assessments, you getting out the stuff, y'all working as a team together. What can you be telling him to kind of give him a head start on what he might need in addition to a non rebreather? Well, I know, I know first we need something to stop the bleeding. So okay, so you stop the bleeding. I'm going to I'm I'm lead y'all. You stop the bleeding. Okay. Um, you said you found the exit wound on the back. That's cool. Um, what you what are you going to do now? You got him laying on the side. You assessed his breathing. Y'all figured out he needed a now rebreather. You found the hole. What else are you going to do now? So we found both the front and back. We checked him for uh, basically the exit wounds. Yep. We applied the gauze, and uh, I was looking for an inclusive dressing. Don't worry about The thing I don't want you to worry about is what you have, because when you start doing scenarios for real, you might have everything, you might not have nothing. What I really want to hear and what I really want to see is if y'all know what y'all talking about when y'all actually doing the assessment. Yeah. So don't worry about the, you said it, inclusive dressing, great. Now what? So once we get him patched up, we got him on oxygen. Uh huh. Uh, I would say um, getting him set up on the backboard to get him loaded into the ambulance at that point. Okay, but what else are you gonna do? Uh, we did palpate his legs, as you mentioned that he couldn't feel. Okay, and you said, and you um, got some movement. Also, I mobile, uh, mobilized his uh, C spine. There C -spine. you go. And actually, yeah, because yeah, once he said he couldn't lose legs, that means that he probably has some injury because um, he couldn't tell him. So it's a spinal uh, issue. Mm -hmm. So we should definitely get a C-spine on him. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, one of us would be grabbing the backboard mm -hmm. to get uh, basically get it under him, get him on here, strap him up, strap the head down, and then we can uh, lock him up. There's a couple more terms I'm looking for before you get there. So you came up and you did a what assessment? Primary. There you go. So now what? 
after our primary, um, I just everybody we checked for the initial uh, trauma, which was the headshot. Mm -hmm. The secondary uh, assessment was us um, finding his, his uh, Well, that was really the primary. Okay. Because you were checking him out just to come so up to begin with. So I, I was saying after we've after we've already like put the dressers and stuff on him and mm -hmm. got him on the uh, stretcher, then we can do our uh, secondary assessment. Okay. Just getting his vitals. There his you go. Pressure. That's what I wanted to know. Yeah. So I'll give you some vitals. Um, ask me which ones you want, though. Um, let's get his respiration. His respirations are 28. Okay, that's not terrible. It's a little fast. What about his blood pressure? His blood pressure Six is five. 90 over pal. Okay. Diastolic? Pal. Uh, yeah. You can't get a bottom number. That's a, that's that's kind of narrow. Um, so I, I I think he's going into shock. Uh, that's, that's what I was what other numbers you looking for? Um, let's get a uh, pulse. 122. 122. And then his oxygen, his saturation, on two. 84. If he needs a, uh, we need oxygen. One more question you should be asking me about it. Is he, is, uh, what's his, his mental status? Is he? Uh, He's able to talk to you, tell you what's going on, but he getting bad fast. That's another question you should be asking me. And I want you to demonstrate with your, your assessment of him, so you, how you determine where his injuries are. You said his respirations were 28, mm -hmm. and his O2 level was 80 something, mm -hmm. 80, 84? Yep. But it's, it's something else I wanna hear. I feel like, I feel like he shouldn't even be on a non breather. We should be trying to set him up on a deep breath. There you go. It's an additional thing I need you to do, though. And it's an additional, I'll tell you what it is. It's an assessment, but it's something I need you to ask me about if you see it or not. Title volume? Nope. All right. He's a good black guy. No, he's white. He's a white guy. Oh, we're looking for like uh, cyanotic uh, issues or Yes, you want to see if he's starting to get acid, if he's losing yeah, any yeah. fluids. Is he? Well, you know he's losing fluids because he yeah. got shot. But you want to see if he's um, color is coming. Is he turning colors? Or is he getting lighter, darker, redder? So that's why I said it's hard to tell on black people. A lot of times, the black people you got to pull their mouth down. Sometimes you got to look inside um, to see if it's like lighter color. Um, white people, that's a little easier to see. Lighter skinned people, I shouldn't say white people. Um, just lighter skinned people, it's easier to see sometimes as opposed to darker people. Okay. Cool. Right. One more thing I'm just gonna add in here is, you know, while you're doing all that, you should be doing a second assessment just to see if there's another gunshot. Yep. Generally, there's more than, if they're shot, they're generally shot more than one time. Okay. True. And I assume, like, cause we, we got the one to the abdomen and his, if his ex exit wound was in his, his back area, if it missed his spine, he might have a second wound somewhere then. Yep. It's like he's, he doesn't have a uh, feeling in his legs. Not um, for the assessment, but for general life. Um, sometimes if you find cases and if you're good at knowing that kind of stuff, um, 22s, once they get inside you, they start bouncing around and jumping around and hitting and tearing up everything. So sometimes you won't find an exit wound. Um, nines come out, 40s come out, um, 45 make a really big hole. So just the different calibers. And like I said, that's not nothing for school, that's just for experience, for mm -hmm. life. All right, sir, so you have a gunshot wound right here? Are you hurt anywhere else? Uh, my leg, uh. Your leg, where, where you hurting your leg? Uh. So is it, a, is it another gunshot wound to the leg? Oh, uh, yeah. We're gonna say yeah. So he got a, he got a, another so gunshot so to his. So um, I'm watching you. You acting like you're scared to touch him. Right. That's what I'm saying. When get you get down there, you got to get down there. You got to touch him. You got to palpate all the way up and down every trip. Yeah. So touch him for real. The questions you asking, you just you asking him, not us. You got a gunshot um to his left, left so um, thigh. We got another thigh. gunshot wound to the left thigh. Left thigh. So I'm gonna get some of it up. Treat him like he's not talking. What if he was what if he, what if he talking? wasn't talking? I don't know why he's talking. I have to figure out I have to find it for myself. There you go. Alright. So, so he got, got another gunshot wound to his left, 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 left eye with no no exit wound. That's fine, that's fine. No exit wound to the left eye. Okay. Alright. So what tool should you be using to get to that leg so you can see the wound under there? 
What tool? Trauma shield. Yeah. So we would cut his pant right, leg up. Right, so you can go ahead and simulate. <laughs> no, I actually go. got some scissors here. We can cut. He don't care about that. <laughs> 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 um, so now, so I might need some apply to get here. I was just about to say, because he got shot in his upper leg. Um, right, so so we don't have a tourniquet. Not a lot of bleeding. Not a lot of bleeding. Yep, not a lot of bleeding. So he didn't hit a heart rate. Cool. If it's slow, it's all right. It's not a lot of bleeding, but you said it's not minimal bleeding. You still do the right pressure on it, or you still have to go do the You have to do the right pressure. I would say that right pressure, because the only time you're going to need a tourniquet is if you hit the artery, hit a vein, since you're not right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two things. Um, in your right leg, you know, you usually have your um, superior artery, which usually that's why I put it in the left leg. In the right leg, it's more likely to have um, a lot of either external or internal bleeding. So you want to keep that in mind as well. Um, it was one more thing and then I think I lost it. Um, okay, keep going. I'm sorry. All right, so I noticed he's starting to ash in a little bit, so we might need to put some oxygen on him. There you go. True. And y'all said go to the BBM. BBM. Good. Yeah. We'll be doing the BBM. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, 28. Oh, we trying to take care of him. We trying to take care of him. We got the crown. They were 28, yeah. All right, so I got the, B, the BBM on him. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. The coaches are talking and stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing as well. My... BBM we, is the right answer. You uh, I was going to say because we, we said his respirations were a little fast but because his he, oxygen level was dropping. Yes. So I felt like he was, he having like some, some type of like, like uh, yes. uh, hyperventilation. But he, yeah, issue. but he can't get that air to the lungs. Yeah. BBM um, is the right answer. You want to get as much title volume as you can get. Collar, but let's just say we put, put a collar on him. All right, so I put the collar on him. We got the backboard ready. Once we uh, get him on that backboard, basically we'll be sliding under him. Yeah, basically we can roll him. Two, three, one more. All right. Now I know this is a trauma assessment, but it's another piece of information that you guys need. Um, how long has he been hurt? Nope. He just got shot. Yeah, roll, roll back over here. One more piece of information. I know this is trauma. This is usually a medical question. What would it be? And y'all have the capability to do it. Well, I know the, um, the mechanism is the gunshot wound. Like, you gotta think, you gotta think of everything. It's a layup. This is, this, this, this. She you like the cup. That's a layup. I'm, I'm blown. I can't think. <laughs> oh, you want me to give it to you? Let me give it to you. you gotta check the sugar. You gonna need that. Oh, it's uh. Okay. So you just could ask that. It's one on seven. So. Okay. But you gotta, you gotta, 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 you gotta hit all those vitals. You gotta get everything. That's why I kept saying. I know it's a trauma, but. One, two, three. All right, y'all can get him up and get him going. And this one last thing that y'all need to remember to get. If you can, while he's talking to you and you're able to get um, information from a reliable source, see if you can get a sample history. Now that is definitely on the paper. You want to get them signed, allergies, medications, events leading to lateral intakes. He might not be willing to talk to you, but that assists you in seeing the patient's competency, see if he's able to talk. That's, like, that's helping you check his airway, that's helping you check his um, mental status and all of that at the same time. Because I mean, what if you took that, what if you took that sugar, he talking to you, you still know what's going on, but it's 42. So, that's what I'm saying, would you worry about that? Would you call for an upgrade? What would you do? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I actually have to go, guys. Get up on that stretcher. I'll see you later. All right, boom. Yep. We're going to lift you up real quick. So, real quick. All right, you can see. All right, hold my count. Oh, wait. So, with this being. Before y'all move, I'm trying to break them with the leg. Make sure everything's beautiful. Yeah, I might want to drop them over there. Yeah, some more. So, it's easier for y'all to put them on. Just want to make sure that everything's beautiful. This is the main one joint. You guys. I'm I'm I know y'all doing y'all thing. Can I just say one more thing to you guys? 
So everybody was talking to y'all and everything they were saying was 100% correct. Um, for those of you who are about to pass, I just found something, what's it called, SNAP nurses. And you can be an EMT or a paramedic. You can travel and get paid because it's COVID time and everything. So once you guys pass, I would sign up for that. Y'all have everything in line. I was just um, saying that that's a great resume builder. Cause like they said, take all these tests and everything. That will look amazing experience wise if you can say during the pandemic you were a traveling EMT B or EMTP that would look great on a resume. So you say snap nurse. Snap nurse. It's either snap nurse or snap nurses. You one of the other. I'll put it up. You can see see uh Mr. I just put it, you get that for it. Yeah, it's on my Instagram page. All right, see you guys. Thanks, 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 Thanks. Thank you. All right, I'm watching. Right, one, two, three. All right. See how they're working together, guys? See how they're counting? See how they're making eye contact? That's how you that's how you work with your partner. All right, well, let's go through. Get them out here, load and go. All right, just make sure now you stop, turn around, and look on the ground. Get all your equipment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, don't, we don't leave equipment. Now. That's one thing we don't do. All time. Correct. So, so we'll go ahead and package this up. That's going to end. That's going to.